Hello, this is Jeremy with Math Boot Camps, and what I'm going to do is show you how to find the inverse of a matrix by hand. Now, not every matrix has an inverse, and uh, so when it does, we say the matrix is invertible, and when it doesn't, we say it's not invertible or it's singular. And so starting out, you don't really know what to expect, but this particular matrix I chose so that it would have an inverse. Um, we'll save the discussion of uh, what happens otherwise for another time. Anytime you're finding this by hand, what you want to do is augment it with the identity. And there's a nice uh, reason, there's nice reasoning behind that. We won't get into it um, in this video because this is just a procedure. But really what you're doing is solving two systems of equations at once. And you can actually show this in a really nice algebraic argument. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this down to the identity. And this over here is going to end up being reduced or adjusted, I suppose, to the inverse. In other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take A augmented with the identity and I'm going to do some row operations and I'm going to get the identity and on the right hand side it will be augmented with the inverse assuming it exists. So I need to start doing regular row operations here. So I see that I already have a 1 here so I don't need to worry about that. I need to get rid of this 4 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4 times row 1 from this row from row 2. When I do that of course, row 1 is truly staying the same, so I leave 1, 2, 1, 0, and I say, okay, minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, plus 4 is 0. Minus 4 times 2 is minus 8, plus 2 is minus 6. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, plus 0 is minus 4. And minus 4 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is just 1. Okay, the next step is I want this value right here to be a 1, and so the way I can get that to be a 1 is by multiplying by minus 1 over 6. And so I do this, and I end up with 1, 2, 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now this will be positive 4 over 6, right? Minus 4 times 1 over negative 1 over 6 is positive 4 over 6, which is really 2 thirds. And then this will be minus 1 over 6. You know, none of us like having to sit here and be real careful messing with fractions. It's not hard, right? It's just annoying. But rarely with inverses are you going to get all nice numbers. Okay, now I have a 1 here. So now the goal is to get this 2 right here to be a 0. So what I got to do is I got to subtract 2 times this 1, which is in row 2. So row 1 is going to have minus 2 row 2 added to it. Or another way to think about it is row 1, we're subtracting from row 1 2 times row 2. So I go down here and I say, OK, nothing's actually happening to row two. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. This helps me keep track of things. I don't know about you, but it helps me. So now I say, OK, minus two times zero, zero, add it to one. I just keep my one. That's the whole reason we put a zero here. Minus two times one is minus two plus two is zero. That's the whole reason we did a minus two. Now remember my augment so I can keep track of everything in, in nice, neat columns. OK, now. Minus 2 times 2 thirds. Oh, I got to write this down. So minus 2 times 2 thirds. And then we're going to add that to 1. So plus 1. So that would be minus 4 thirds plus 1. So that'd be minus 1 third. Okay. So now I come down here and say, okay, this is minus 1 third. All right. Now, next one minus 2 times minus 1 over 6. Let's do this a little quick. Minus 2 times minus 1 over 6. And then we're going to add that to 0. I don't have to write that down, so I end up with positive 2 over 6. In other words, I end up with 1 third. So I get my value is positive 1 third. Now, of course, this whole thing isn't my inverse. I can write it down here. A inverse equals minus 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 2 over 3, and minus 1 over 6. Okay, so this is my inverse. Now the question is, how do you double check your work here? Remember, if I multiply this matrix by our original right up here, multiply these two, I should end up with the identity. So you can always double check your work. I promise you, though, that I already checked this, so this works out. And again, make sure you're very careful. As you can see, the little addition and subtraction things, they seem so easy, but it's so easy to make a little mistake because you're focused on the big picture. So steps, augment with the identity, row reduce, and you end up with A inverse on the right-hand side of the augment. Finally, if, if this matrix is not invertible, 
you end up with a step that suggests there's no solutions here. And that's when you know that you have a singular matrix.